Hey, uh, the next thing we talk about here is uh, is the passes that occur inside a shell and tube heat exchanger. And a pass is just one travel, one tr distance traveled across the length of the tubes. So the the shell side could travel once, once it enters and exits, and the tube side could enter once and exit. Now, by the very nature of say a a U tube, if you look here, the actual tube side, you pass one time the length of the tubes, then you come around and you pass again. So a U tube is typically a two pass right out of the gate, two pass um, heat exchanger on the tube side. And in this case, you'll see that the the shell is only a single pass. It comes in, passes one length, and leaves. So this is a two pass tube single pass shell. Then you come up here, and you have a, what's known as a two-pass, two-pass. The, uh, the shell is forced to go one length, and there's a divider there, and then it has to go the length of the tubes again, just like the tubes themselves did. So this is a two-pass tube and shell heat exchanger. And then finally, down at the bottom, you have a four-pass tube, two-pass shell. But it's pretty cool. <clears throat> and that's discussed right here. Now, uh, here on the right-hand side, we discuss regenerative heat exchangers. What's cool about a regenerative heat exchanger is it has no external cooling source. And if you'll turn to the next page, we actually give an example here. And in the boiling water world, the reactor might be sitting right here. You know what I'm going to do? Here, I'm going to do this. So here's the reactor. And maybe either coming off a recirc loop and or the bottom head, I'm going to want to take water there. And I'm going to go send it to a, a, a system that can clean up the water. We call that, if you came from the Navy, you call it the purification system. But we call it our reactor water cleanup system. And um, this is a recirc loop, and this would be off of the bottom head. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send it to a system that's going to obviously have a, a filter in it. And uh, the first thing we do, though, is we send it through a regenerative heat exchanger one more or more, and then we send it to a non-regenerative heat exchanger. Non-regenerative heat exchanger. The non-regenerative heat exchanger has an external cooling source. Cold water coming in, and hot water leaving. Then we can send it to a pump through a filter demineralizer, and now it's been cooled down by this external source, but I sure would like to preheat it because I'm going to send it back to the reactor. So what we can do then, and this is why it's regenerative in nature, is we preheat it. And this actually becomes the cooling water source for the hot water coming from the reactor. So you can see we're just exchanging heat. Here the water enters, and here we're using that hot water to preheat this water going back before we send it back to the reactor. So that's the, the, the uniqueness of a regenerative heat exchanger in that it doesn't have any external heating source. It uses the same fluid on both sides of the heat exchanger. It's just it's gone through a non-regenerative heat exchanger afterwards. And you can see that here. The non-regenerative heat exchangers are right here, and there's actually two of them in series in this drawing. And you can kind of see the, the cooling water. And there is no cooling water source here. From, for the regenerative heat exchangers, the water just comes from the reactor vessel, or uh, in this case, it says from recirc, and it's going to go through the regens, through the non-regen, and then it's going to go to RWCU pumps and the filter d -min. Then it's going to return from the d -mins and it gets preheated as it's going back towards the reactor vessel via the feed water loops. So that's a, a regenerative heat exchanger.